Welcome to the Seal Beach Center for Spiritual Living. It's in April and March. We talked about creating the highest possibilities in our lives by living in the question. And now it's April. And now it's time to live from our refined vision. However, that refined vision has a nuance to it. And John, could you put up my Joseph Campbell slide? Sometimes that refined vision we don't know what the first step is. As Reverend Nicole just put up this great poster from Martin Luther King that says, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the staircase. So whatever we talk about, we talk about this all the time, we talk about the creative process, we talk about us thinking and creating our life experience. But a lot of times, we're talking about living in the world that others have thought for us. We're just finishing foundations. And we're talking about the law, the universal law. And one of the hardest things that we've had to study in foundations is it is impersonal, which doesn't mean it doesn't care about you, but it thinks as you think. And so one of our hardest things is our complacency. We get in our comfort zone. We talk from where other people, society, we call it race consciousness, and that's a, a term that's hard to understand. But we can talk about cultural consciousness. We can talk about this church consciousness. We can talk about the science of mind teaching consciousness. But that's rigid. And, and a lot of the people, like Tony Robbins, when he talks, he talks is it your ego understanding, your ego is what understands the world and has its limitations, or is it your soul talking? And I want to revise that, not to your soul talking. Is it your divine spirit that's talking? So is that, could you put that Joseph Campbell slide up for me, John? So this is stepping out. And I want you to see this slide because there's something meaning, very meaningful about this slide. So you notice there's a light there. It's sort of dark. There's a sunset there. It looks sort of pretty to me. There's forest there. But you don't know what's over there. You don't know if there's a picnic table on the shore or it's lined with snakes. You don't know what's in the water, but you have to trust the process that if you're doing your work right, if you're doing your faith right, that process is what is your greater yet to be. And your greater yet to be only comes from you. And sometimes, we have to let go of this comfort zone. Because to step into this life that Joseph Campbell is telling us, we have to let go of all of our great plans. Now we can hold on to those great plans, and we can execute it, we can get a, a, a result that's probably pretty good. At least a lot of people will tell us it's pretty good. But that plan is not our greatest yet to be. That greatest yet to be is coming from what you, whatever you want to call it, in vernacular, your, your divine soul, but your divine purpose, your divine entity is not dependent on anything you've ever done. It's going to bring out that greatness inside of you that will create something that's never been done. It will create it in the likeness of you because you being that great divine entity that you are. And it's a powerful, powerful place for you to be. So when we let go of the comfort zone, we step into that greater life. And that can mean stepping into an education, stepping into a marriage. And a lot of times we think about this a lot, and a lot of times we just sort of don't think, just sort of happenstance into it. Then kids come around, we have child raising to do. And then careers come and go, there's a career change. 
And then we have this thing called retirement. And for me, it's sort of like COVID uh, gave me almost looks like an early retirement. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that. I have, I have not had a full-time job in 40 years. But what we have to do is we have to understand. And let me take this other mic, John. So many times you've, I've told you, you step into your life, you step into the power of your life, and you're a choice. And the entire world is just a world of possibilities. And you and only you makes that choice of what you're going to coalesce into your greatness of your life or coalesce into the mundaneness of your life or coalesce into the tragicness of your life, depending on what you choose, because it's all about you. Now, one of Ernest Holmes' famous teachers, Thomas Troward, told us we need to stop thinking and judging by the world of effects. We need to go to what he called first cause. And first cause is not dependent on anything that has ever happened in the entire world before. It's the divine inside of you creating that special and unique aspect of you. And when they create that special and unique aspect of you, and you allow it to be, as um, Ernest Holmes' last person read, Aurobindo the Great Mystic, when the veils have parted, we can see conscious new reality as it really is. It doesn't happen very often. We've been talking in foundations. You know, we think out of race consciousness or group consciousness probably 98% of the time. And every now and then, we get this insight. We get this blissful feeling of what our greater yet to be could actually be. And we follow it. And we follow it. Because we have this great creative process at work. We have this thing we call the law of cause and effect, right? We have this, and this is a tough thing. This is a foundations class. It was really fun dealing with this issue. We have this universal law that is impersonal. No, it cares about you but it does your bidding. It's automatic and it's definitely intelligent. So what you're thinking about is coalescing into the form of your life, into your reactions, into your relationships with people, into all the good and all the, I won't say not so good, but all the mundane and all the tragic stuff that you're experiencing. Because the freedom to think is our divine birthright. We have it. It's ours. So we can choose our life at will to be as great or as powerful as we choose. But we've got to get out of our comfort zone sometimes. So the saying, change your thinking, change your life, sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Sounds damn easy, doesn't it? So, and we don't deny, we're not into denial, we don't deny a kiss, uh, that a condition exists, but we understand why that condition has existed from previous thoughts and previous law of the creative process happening. What we deny that it has to continue. But sometimes this, um, this comfort zone that we're in even if it's in our discontentment, is powerful. And we stay in that comfort zone rather than being called out and do what we were called to do. So all of us have this unique comfort zone, and all of us have this other thing. It's your divine soul's divine purpose that is yours and yours alone. And the great opera singer Caruso in a way, he knew this. He would dance around backstage, and he would say, little me, move over. Big me, take over. He was psyching himself up.
to be the absolute best opera singer that only he could do because he had these God-given gifts to do it. And he was getting his ego out of the way. And he was letting his divine soul come through and shine through him and empower him and know the truth for him and speak the word and sing the words like no one but him could do. And he wasn't sitting there backstage saying, oh my God, am I gonna screw this up? He was saying, get my damn little ego out of the way and let the greatness in me shine and shine and shine some more. It's a powerful place for us to be. So, so maybe the first step, Thich Nhat Hanh says, for a wave, enlightenment becomes when a wave realizes it's water. That sounds funny, but a wave isn't an individual thing. I studied oceanography and I know the waves form 400 miles out at sea from storms. And the funny thing about a wave, a sea wave, is the water that forms the storm is not the water that hits the beach. But there's a correlation and those waves are just transferring energy, knowing that they will reach shore and the molecules are staying. So the molecules 400 miles out stay, but it's power and the force and the energy that gets transferred. And Martin Luther King called, when we did that, he called this soul force. We're transforming the force of our divine soul to what we need to do. Marianne Williams says, when we realize we are not separate, then and only then is when we become powerful. So that's good. We have this realization. The second step is we have to step out in the unknown. And what will it bring us? We don't know. What will we have to leave behind if we're brave enough to step out into the unknown? We don't know that. But we do know that we've had a divine purpose from the moment we were born. And we can put it aside and aside and aside forever and forever, but that's not going to serve our higher soul, our higher greater good, our higher purpose. We need to embrace it. Marianne Williams says each of us has a unique part to heal the world. So you have a unique part to heal the world. And you're not going to find it by asking other people's opinions, judging other people as what they're doing is the wrong thing or what they shouldn't be doing. You're gonna find it by going within and finding it from your soul, from your divine essence itself. So now is the time and there's no person but you that can do it for you. And so the third step is that's fine. We know the first step is we know we have to be connected. Second step is, just as we've been talking about, we need to be ready to leave some stuff behind. We need to be ready for this vision of a higher, great, greater to be for you and for I to show up. And now is the time and you are the person. But the science of mind principles helps us in this, it, it leads us into a point of finding spiritual, emotional, physical, and financial awakening. It does all of that because we are part of this creative process. We are not a result of something acting on us as we think we influence what our world looks like, as we think we influence how much love goes out in the world, as we think we influence how much joy goes out in the world, and when we think we influence how much of a compassionate world that we absolutely live in. So now is the time for your good to be strong, your conviction to be strong, and your faith to be strong. So John, could you give me my first Ernest Holmes quote? Do 
if I have a Mary Ann one. Yep. The greatest gift life could have made to you is yourself. You are a spontaneous, self-choosing center. In the great drama of being, the great joy of becoming, the certainty of eternal expansion. So the one thing that, that spirit does, it pushes creation. And it's up to us on where that creation goes. It can go into more of the same. It can go into a very limited way of being. Or it can go into this divine expression that we have inside of us of a greater, greater yet to be. And that's all up to us. So we need to keep falling, we need to quit falling back to our comfort zone, to our complacency to listening to others, to be afraid to step up, to be afraid to think for ourselves. Reverend Nicole has a favorite saying, Ernest Holmes never told us how to think, what to think. He told us how to think. And how to think is to think creative from that essence, from that beauty, from that joy that your soul actually is. But we keep falling back to this comfort zone. John, can you give me that last Ernest Holmes slide? So now we have a bit of a challenge. So we must climb over the rocks of unbelief, pass around the berries of doubt, and plunge into the stream with faith. So we got to go to this point we got to see reality out there in potentiality. And we have to make a very, very strong and powerful and enlightened decision about that. And the decision isn't going to come from someone else. That decision is going to come from that greater good, that powerful spiritual divine being in you that's in no one else. And that's going to be a, a decision that's going to create so much good for everyone involved. But we got to step out. we got to step out into the unknown. We have to do that. And so, John, can you give me the final slide? The, the one, the last one with the picture on it. Thank you. So this is my challenge to you. I want you to confidently step up into your greatness. And so there's, you know, a bit of that that you can do each and every day. And there's a powerful place for you to step into your greatness. And I know that a week or two I, sh I shared with you, now that Reverend Nicole's back from her sabbatical, there's some deep anxiety issues that I'm trying to figure out and I'm going to do a very deep emotional and spiritual dive to get straight with that. But instead of me taking a sabbatical, I changed my mind. So now I think, I don't think, I know, because it's great, the Buddhists have a saying, when you realize reality as it really is, so now's the time for me to step back from my leadership role and for me to allow Nicole, who has been training for this for years, to step into the senior minister role without me. And you have, here with Nicole, one of the absolute best ministers in the movement. So, um, she has always amazed me. Her consciousness is by far the best of any I've seen in the movement. And so what I ask of you is I will continue to support this center. 
I will, for me, I'm stepping out. I've been here 16 years. And for me, I'm taking this first step into a place without this beautiful comfort zone that I've bragged about so many times with you guys. How beautiful this center is, especially when it's functioning in its highest way. How it's just love, how it's just compassion. So I ask you to absolutely do things to support Nicole, to love her, and I ask you not to be critical of her, to cheer her along the way. Because I remember when Josh left, he says, he was talking about Nicole, he says, well, you got Mickey Mantle here, all you have to give her is a little batting practice. <laughs> so what my ask of you is that you absolutely just support her and love her don't even question her. And know that as she leads, this place will be brought to the absolute beautiful place that it needs to be. And from my end, I'm stepping out into the unknown, leaving a place I've been 16 years. But sometimes, sometimes a comfort zone is too limiting, is too comfortable, and you get your priorities mixed up. And so now my priorities is, I've been telling everyone here for 16 years, my priorities is to reach out, not depend on any church, and reach out and understand those issues that have been limiting me, but not only that, to reach out just as I've been telling you for 20 minutes right now, to reach out and empower myself, to be this divine, beautiful person that I am. And I will always love the center, and I will always keep in my daily prayers the highest and best for Seal Beach Center for Spiritual Living. That's a commitment I'll make to you, and that commitment will never, never change. So please, Oh, we, we, we missed the thing. <laughs> Please, each of you, confidently step up and into your greatness. And stop asking one another what it is. Go within, empower yourself, and find that beautiful greatness that you are. And step into it and act as if you've stepped into it. Thank you. I love you. God bless you.